Hey, we're... there it is. <laughs> so Lisa it is. <laughs> Lisa said go. <laughs> it is Thursday at three o'clock. We're live from Ottawa. It's LinkedIn Live. What else is am I missing here? Well, oh, no, wait. Live on Facebook. Live, live at Epifan. Yeah, and we're also live on LinkedIn with right. Epifan Live, and that's a lot of live. A lot of live. Uh, There's three so, lives going on. Yeah. So, of course, Thursday at 3 o'clock, we're always here with Epifan Live with different topics talking about live streaming and everything that involves live streaming to some degree. That's right. And this week, we have a very cool show with a special guest. And uh, we're going to dive into a whole bunch of questions and pick rapid fire, rapid fire questions, and uh, try to dig out all the juicy bits of what's going to come down the line from LinkedIn Live in the future. That's right. So okay. I'm going to introduce our guest today. It's Christina Minchel from LinkedIn Live, and Christina is joining us all the way from Toronto. It was, was a long, so, it was a long, long track. <laughs> she had to fly all the way here. She had to stay at a hotel. So hard. I thought she was staying at the Fairmont downtown from her Instagram, but uh, she's just down the street, actually. I'm it's, right uh, next door. Yeah, right next Made door. Made it easy for you guys. In the parking lot, just sleeping in the <laughs> rental car. But no, not at all. And of course, I am watching chat, so I can see everyone here in YouTube chat. Um, so just wanted to say hi to a few people. Hi to Linda, Tim Trott, uh, Stefan's there. Uh, high Altitude obs Observatory, that's a really long name, you need to fix that for YouTube, it's too long. <laughs> uh, Rosenbauer America, and uh, everyone's just chatting in there. So, uh, thanks everyone for joining us, and we will dive in here shortly. But I did want to just touch on one thing that Tim was saying before we went live, that I'd love to hear more about, Tim, in the future, and that's uh, you're finally able to connect with a TEDx event in Florida, and you want to really do one. I'd love to hear more about that, uh, Tim. So please keep us informed of what's happening there. And that's very cool. When Tim was on our show, uh, show a few weeks ago, yeah. he said one of his goals is to nail down a TEDx. So if you're actually yeah. doing that production, that's very exciting and that's cool to hear. So congratulations, yeah. Yeah. Tim. Yeah, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. So and lots, lots of people saying hi, Stefan and uh, Faithful Mess and, and right. our regular viewer, viewers. So welcome. And I should also mention that LinkedIn Live is in beta, so we're not actually able to port through the comments to our live show like we normally would. So if you are watching us on LinkedIn Live today, please feel free to comment, and Lisa's going to be monitoring that and just porting those over just yeah. audibly. Exactly. And as usual, uh, I'm mostly watching YouTube, so I apologize if I miss anyone from <laughs> Facebook comments. Um, yeah, it's on the other channels. YouTube there. stuff flies by so quick, I focus on that. Um, so We do have a question actually from Linda. So, uh, <laughs> Christina, pressing, pressing question, <laughs> did you fly from the island? Uh, so I didn't fly from the island. Oh, um, I'm Pearson? an ex-West Jetter like yourself, mm -hmm. so I flew WestJet from um, Pearson from Airport. Pearson. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, WestJet has no, no presence porter. on the island. It's yeah, only porter, only Porter. Band. Just those Indians. raccoons running around. <laughs> That's true. That's so, true. All the raccoons. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So of course, as we go through, we we have a whole list of questions uh, mm -hmm. for Christina, and we're going to get to those. But if anyone has questions as we go through, please put them in chat and uh, we'll try to bring those up as well. I did see some already um, that we'll, we'll get to there from High Altitude Observatory. We'll, I'll get to that in a moment before we dive into that. So I'm going to hand it over to Cameron to start our questioning. I have a really difficult, challenging question for you. This is hard hitting. Okay, We're going to scrap all the ones that you had approved by your oh, PR team. Oh no! Just put you on the spot. PR's not going to like that. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> now, um, what is your role in LinkedIn, and how long have you been with the company? Uh, so I've been at LinkedIn uh, two years now, and my role at LinkedIn is a client solutions manager, and for enterprise tech um, partnerships within marketing solutions. So that's a huge mouthful <laughs> of information and jargon. Yeah, let's break that down uh, we'll, a little we'll bit. We'll break that <laughs> down a little bit. Uh, so essentially, basically what I do is I help enterprise tech corporations with their marketing strategy. So I work with different CMOs, VPs, directors, managers, and really just help them with their marketing needs, um, fulfilling their objectives on our platform. Cool. And uh, Christina was actually here earlier meeting with our marketing team yeah. and talking about some tips and some training on how to better use LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn. I was going to say LinkedIn Live again. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just kind of arming our team with that. Yeah. And Christina and I used to work together at WestJet on the marketing team. Yeah. And Christina was actually able to get us in the door with the beta program. So yeah, which is actually one of the questions that. that just came up from Tim Trott saying, is it still in beta or is it open? Um, and we'll probably discuss that a little more. Uh, Does it go, go to beta through. to alpha or is it down no, to Charlie? No, it goes from alpha, alpha beta to beta release. <laughs> um, so I guess one of our other questions, um, you know, what sort of services do you offer companies that use the LinkedIn platform? Yeah, absolutely. So overall, our mission at LinkedIn is to 
create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. So that's kind of like our overarching vision. Our mission at LinkedIn is to make professionals more productive and successful. So that ladders up there. Okay. So within that, we kind of have these four key pillars, hire, market, sell, and learn. So within hire, um, we have a LinkedIn talent solutions team, and they're all about helping HR professionals on our platform. So they help them recruit talent, source jobs, post jobs. Then we have our sales solutions team, which is in the sell pillar, and they help our sales professionals with all of the sales needs that they need. So closing deals, helping secure prospects. And then we have our LinkedIn Learning Solutions team within the learning pillar. And they're all about helping corporations um, secure the best talent and also um, proactively provide them with like learning solutions to upskill themselves. And then we have my pillar. So my pillar is market. And we're all about um, our marketing solutions and we help a range of marketers really help them um, achieve their objectives, whether they be brand awareness, consideration, lead generation, and connect them to all the world's professionals. Cool. Right. Do you have the premium LinkedIn or you I premium have, LinkedIn guy? I barely use regular LinkedIn, uh, let alone premium. Oh, anything. we're going to have to change uh, that after the show, George. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I, I, <laughs> I had to downgrade for a little while, just for you know, budget, a little budget crunch. But uh, I did like that LinkedIn acquired Linda. That was a huge, a huge bump in that learning pillar. Yeah. So that was very cool, especially when it comes to um, actually uh, talent acquisition, because then you can see these courses. And a lot oh, of the, the times, like, are incredible. oh, totally, and you can you can learn a lot of this stuff from YouTube, and you can see it and get it all for free. But having an accreditation that's actually like quantifiable on LinkedIn is it makes a huge difference. Absolutely. So you've been with LinkedIn for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. What uh, accomplishments are you most proud of since starting with LinkedIn? Yeah. So for me at LinkedIn, I'm like really proud of our company holistically, um, especially like our marketing solutions team. Um, our product and engineering teams have like just been working around the clock to uh, refine products and make marketers more successful. So we've been launching like so many cool new products and new features and functionalities like LinkedIn Live. Um, so I'm really proud of that. And then uh, stepping back from like the holistic corporation for me personally, um, one of my passion projects at LinkedIn is helping lead a committee called Women at LinkedIn. And we're a committee of seven members and powerhouse women. And what we're all about is creating an inclusive community at, and culture at LinkedIn Canada and helping women advance their careers, inspiring them, empowering them, and really helping them bring their authentic selves to the workplace. Um, so we've been doing tons of cool internal and external events, partnering a lot with women at Microsoft and kind of looking for some other partners within the tech sphere to, to kind of like boost that um, gender empowerment. Cool. Yeah. Very, Very cool. cool. Yeah. So we do have some questions in here, but uh, some of these actually are relate to some of the other questions that we had prepared okay. ahead of time. So I might leave some of those, but I did uh, find I'll this one. I'll have to cross one. them off so I don't ask the same yeah, question exactly. again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I did find this one I'll interesting. I'll be like, I answered that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not twice. That, uh, that Stefan was asking, uh, are the mini boxes in the background full? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, they're not. Uh, they're well, and actually, to answer your question, props. these are all the reject boxes. Yeah. So initially, when we got all these boxes, and our yeah. team went through, and they're it was defects. this big origami day, everyone got together, and uh, Dan shot a time lapse, which was really cool. But all the staff got together, everyone folded these boxes together, and these are the ones that didn't make it. So instead of sending subpar products out <laughs> to our customers that had dings and scratches and offsets, we just used them for the set because you can't see because that's out of focus. Yeah. 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 So but yeah, they're exactly. You can't tell on camera that they're all defects, but mm -hmm. but they are. They it's have like the some CTV flaw. set. It's all made out of duct tape. Right yeah, there. exactly. It's <laughs> all, it's all <laughs> duct tape it's and patched together. Tinsel. It's, it's um, all real stainless steel. So I think one of the big questions that we have, and probably the reason we're here today doing yeah. this interview, is why has LinkedIn decided to go for a live streaming as part of the platform? Yeah, absolutely. So we're we're really excited about this LinkedIn Live experience. Um, over the last few years, what we've really been focusing on is content and conversation on LinkedIn. 
and really focusing on giving our members an opportunity to share what they're learning about, share what they want, what they need, um, help others, take help, and really all of that conversation has been really centered on not only our static kind of content, but also within our video content. Um, so as you guys may know, we launched native video within um, our LinkedIn experience about two years back. Right. And after that experience of launching native video, we received tons of member feedback, tons of advertiser feedback, such as yourselves, um, saying, you know what, we want a live version. Right. We would love a live version. This native video is incredible, but we'd love a live version. So we, our product teams and our engineering teams and our sales teams take in all that feedback and we really consider um, options going forward. And that was the number one ask coming out of our native video experience. So we decided, okay, let's try it out. Let's do a beta sure. and see what the feedback is from there and then move forward. Yeah, which is very interesting. And, and I mean, everyone's doing live these days. Right? Yeah. It, live it, is so hot right now. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> uh, for sure. Um, so I guess one of the big things that, that we always kind of run into as, with, with Epifan, of course, is everyone asks, why should I use one platform or another? Um, I was watching an interview uh, this morning while I was eating breakfast talking about how when you launch new platforms, which LinkedIn isn't, of course, but yeah. when people do, something has to be the core unique factor. And so I guess the big question is, what is making LinkedIn Live different from some of the other platform options out there that people are already familiar with? Yeah, I think the big difference is the context that you're live streaming in. Mm -hmm. So LinkedIn is a very different environment. Um, and we also have such a great audience on our platform. So within the environment, it's a very trusted environment. Um, every year, Business Insider releases a digital trust report where they look at different platforms and different marketing channels and kind of measure the trust that consumers have in those platforms. And every kind of year for the last three years, um, LinkedIn has been on top of that trust platform. Right. So yeah. that's something we're really proud of. We're always trying to create a member's first experience on LinkedIn and be a place that consumers can come and, and B2B um, buyers as well can come and feel like they're in a trusted environment. Right. So when you're live streaming, you're in that trusted environment. And then you're also catering to um, a professional audience right. in a very different mindset than they may be on more social platforms. Right. So when they come to our platform, they're really kind of like investing their time and thinking about their careers and their um, their companies and kind of advancing that. So that professional mindset provides that differentiation. Yeah. Well, that's, that's something that we're very aware of with content on LinkedIn Live. One like on LinkedIn is like the equivalent of 15 or 20 likes <laughs> on Facebook. Right, because it's not just not, people going through spamming it like they do on Instagram. Absolutely, it's, it's, absolutely. It's, a different it's not spam and I would imagine there's probably very fewer bots and all the content that's on LinkedIn is very genuine because it's really linked to your career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's your professional you identity. Exactly. Any content you're sharing or, or providing, that's linked to your professional identity. So people are very cognizant of that when they, when they share. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We don't hear about fake news on LinkedIn. That's well, not, I mean, I that's probably not a have to start using LinkedIn more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to happen. Yeah, I keep looking over and saying it as if uh, yeah, as if, as if I you're use involved. It we're going to get George <laughs> all trained up every by, six months. by uh, <laughs> the end of this hour. We're yeah, going to be like yeah. LinkedIn influencer. Yeah, and I'll, <laughs> pass, I'll pass along his contact. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but he, he does have very nice LinkedIn socks. I do. I know. Oh, so yeah. people can see them. I do have LinkedIn socks. Those are nice. Special gift. Chroma blue, too. Yeah. We're not doing any chroma, luckily. Yeah, Christina. So we're halfway there. We're halfway there. Yeah. There. <laughs> halfway there. So is the underwear the next step? Oh no! no? That's like the other half. We're we're not going into Ellen's uh, <laughs> genre. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, now that kind of brings us to a really good question. So you're talking about how LinkedIn is a trusted platform, and that's actually really cool to hear. I wasn't aware of the fact that yeah. you're making the top of that report. So as part of the beta program, what kind of vetting or what kind of approval process has gone behind actually bringing in uh, members into the beta program for the live streaming? 
Yeah, so um, with our beta program, um, on our help center, we have an application form. And that application form is both for members or companies that want to go ahead and live stream. And they can still fill that out today, like we're still accepting um, beta applicants throughout cool. the next few months. And basically, we're trying to find a very diverse group of individuals, as well as a very diverse group of companies to provide their expertise in the LinkedIn Live experience. And uh, just trying to get that kind of like diverse group to show different work cultures. Just like us. <laughs> we only have 75% uh, of the guys are bearded. Yeah, exactly. Bearded men here, yeah. we're very diverse. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, and I'm, I'm joking, of course. Yeah. But um, when do you expect that it'll be opened up for all users for LinkedIn Live? Do you have a, is there like a, like a, a date set for that or any kind of roadmap plan for when it'll actually be opened up for all users? Yeah, so there isn't a date quite set yet. What we're doing is we're getting a lot of advertiser feedback, a lot of member feedback, like I said, with our native video experience we did. And we're kind of taking that in and then seeing how it goes, making refinements, and then we'll, we'll keep you in the loop of like when that's being rolled out. Um, definitely stay tuned to our LinkedIn Marketing Solutions blog. That, that provides all of our, like, our latest product updates and uh, release cool. schedules because we're happy being like the only <laughs> company out there <laughs> right well, now i mean that's in our so funny it, enough just, just <laughs> well no no sorry i mean we're, we're happy with our exclusivity for now yeah. so feel free to take your time on that. probably the one of the most common questions we're seeing in chat right now is people asking about you know is the beta still open can people still apply when will it go public yeah. um so just looking at some of those um atr treehouse uh, was just saying you know, how can a live production companies try LinkedIn Live uh, so that when their their customers eventually ask them how to do it, um, you know, they'll they'll already know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is that something they can still apply for the beta access? Absolutely, beta is open guess. right now. Um, you'll navigate to the LinkedIn Help Center. Mm -hmm. um, so just type in LinkedIn Help Center into your search engine. Um, use Bing. Um, to search that, and then you'll be able to uh, navigate there, and there'll be an application form for members and an application form for companies that are interested. Okay, perfect. Because, yeah, pe people are definitely asking about that one. Yeah, um, no. Definitely. And we can post a link for that in our comments section yeah, as well we can. Try and in the description yeah. for the video. But I did get one question in here that was interesting. It was sort of a two part question from two different viewers. Um, Stefan was sort of saying LinkedIn seems to be mainly used within North America, the US and Canada. Is that true, or is this something, I guess, so Stefan's based in, in Germany, okay. uh, if I recall correctly, yeah. and uh, so he may not see that or feel that maybe LinkedIn's exposure is as noticeable in that part of Europe, maybe? Is, yeah. that, is that something that... So, uh, no, that's actually not the case. Um, okay. We have 610 million members worldwide, and LinkedIn has um, tons of offices around the globe, including Germany. We have offices in Australia, in India, China, Japan. Um, I connect with them regularly. Um, so there's teams there and definitely members there as well. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So one of the follow-ups is where is the largest user share coming from? I suspect it's probably still North America, but just... That's social media in general. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's definitely a large user share in North America, but yeah. also like India and China, sure. um, those are like high populated areas yeah. for us. Yeah, excellent, yeah. Cool. excellent. Uh, I'm just gonna go through here, so Cameron, you can go ahead and keep going on our questions. Oh yeah, yeah you can move through there. So um, oh, yeah. we actually use Wirecast to, uh, to do our streams. So we're streaming from our Perl into Wirecast and then onto LinkedIn just using an API. But um, what are some of the tips that you would give to other folks that are looking to get started or once they get started on their own LinkedIn Live uh, streams? Yeah, so some best practices I'd keep in mind, like if you're a new advertiser coming on board, I think number one is having like a really strong internet connection. So think about running a speed test, making sure that you have at least 10 megabytes per second upload speeds. Yeah. That's gonna be really important for streaming. And then also think about uh, your pre and post promotion strategy for your LinkedIn Live videos. So pre post, do some uh, organic or sponsor content posts telling people about the timing of your LinkedIn Live video so that they can tune in and follow along on your company. And if they are following your company, they're gonna get an automatic notification that you're going live. 
So helping people get um, pre-warned in advance, so you're going to be going live, that's super key. And then also thinking post LinkedIn uh, live strategy, thinking about keeping your um, LinkedIn uh, live video on your company page so that people can still participate and contribute to the conversation. I have like quite a few partners that might be tuning in now or they might be um, tuning in later and I said, we're gonna have it still on um, your guys' company page. Right. So totally. you guys can still like join into the conversation and watch the video afterwards. Right. And another thing I kind of keep in mind is um, doing what you guys are doing right now, having um, a second or third party. Have a um, moderator. And, a moderator yeah. that's um, looking at the feed and seeing the different comments that are coming in. And then that person can help like report comments, that person can help delete comments, that person can help um, feed comments to the show's presenters and respond back accordingly just so you have that like second set mm -hmm. of, um, of, of eyes. Um, one of my partners recently did a LinkedIn Live video and they have, um, I think they have like 1.2 million followers. So their, their comments were like out of control oh, and yeah. uh, they, did, they actually that. didn't have like a second <laughs> set of persons. Oh, so you have like a team, eyes. not just like Yeah, a, so they were like, that was our one learning. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you need moderators. Yeah, that, definitely that moderators. Um, well, that's that's something that we've uh, joked about before because we have a pretty modest following and, yeah. and we have our dedicated viewers. Thank you very much, Stefan and Tim Trott and Linda. But um, we couldn't imagine having like millions of followers and just yeah. having comments yeah. just like streaming up. You watch like CBC News on Facebook or YouTube or any it's other live non streaming non platform. That's why so many of them disable this chat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, but they did say like all the comments were like super valuable, super engaging, absolutely. and like had that kind of like professional mindset. Well, again, and I think so, you would expect that on yeah, LinkedIn uh, as yeah. opposed to the, the normal so social media platforms where people are just leaving their anonymous and throwing, throwing totally. things around. Yeah. Well, um, future enhancements uh, would also benefit from having highlighted comments from users or I've started to see other platforms where they have uh, super users or top yeah. commenters and those comments yeah, go right absolutely. to the top. So, yeah. you know, it'll be a, a good future enhancement. We have a bunch of questions here, so I'm going to rapid fire a couple yeah, of these of at you here. Um, so the first one was uh, from Tim Trott just saying, what kind of live content are you looking for in terms of, I guess, the what type, yeah, just what's, what's yeah, the target type question. of content? Absolutely. So we're looking to show like a variety of different work cultures and we're looking to show a variety of different people. So any kind of like different experiences that you can bring to the table, super huge. Um, timely content is something that's working really, really well. So we're seeing like tons of advertisers do like live streams from town halls mm -hmm. or press conferences or big product announcements mm -hmm. or big brand announcements. Right. So that timely content is super key. Also interactive content is amazing. So I, I recently watched like a Hootsuite live um, video right. and they did it with their CEO, Ryan Holmes, and he was answering questions kind of real time. So it's sort of um, a video AMA kind of thing to absolutely, support the brand. Absolutely. So that interactive piece mm -hmm. is just huge yeah. because it allows people to kind of connect with the brand, have those real time conversations and get questions asked. Like what, when would you ever get access to Ryan Holmes on the platform. Well, and if it was on another platform, for example, you wouldn't have the same kind of quality uh, from those comments or from those users. <laughs> you never know. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to say that in the, the nicest bust. way I can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, like we talked about before, uh, yeah. LinkedIn being a trusted platform, Ryan Holmes is more interested in putting himself on that platform and exposing himself to those kinds of questions, where it'd be less it's likely to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah more comfortable, exactly. More Absolutely. Another big question that several people brought up here is: Okay, it sounds awesome. If you're building a brand, it sounds like Love it's that. the perfect thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the big question everyone's asking about is what is this all going to cost me to go live on LinkedIn? Yeah, so right now, um, nothing. It doesn't cost you anything to go live. Um, if you want to invest in um, some paid promotion of it, um, then um, you can talk to like a LinkedIn Marketing Solutions account team to get estimates around that. Um, but to go live, uh, not, not okay. a cost. And it's expected that probably yeah. won't change once it's fully public, it's sort of that, that same idea that you know, at a base level, it would be uh, a, a free solution, but then boosting it. Would yeah, be like a, a, like a all of our other products, like there's our organic version, mm -hmm. um, that people 
can um, put out to an organic audience. And then there's also paid options on LinkedIn to get it to a, a, a larger audience. Cool, thanks. And yeah. I should point out too, just so that our viewers are aware, there are free options for streaming using streaming platforms that you can use, or you can also use paid streaming options. So Wirecast, for example, right. is a paid program, but there are free apps as well that are being supported by LinkedIn's yeah, API. Absolutely. And those ones are easy to get into, and that way you can get in, you're not gonna have a big investment, and you're probably leveraging gear that you already have for video production. Absolutely. Yeah. So one thing that is popping up here that's kind of funny, um, <laughs> we've been trying to share the link to our LinkedIn live stream in the chat, um, our moderators have been, and apparently YouTube is blocking that link and not allowing it to be pasted <laughs> oh. into chat. So I apologize <laughs> to people me. who are looking for that. We are trying. Even our friends at PTZ Optics, hey Paul and Tess, were asking if we were live on LinkedIn right now, and yes we are, uh, so hopefully you can find that. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get it up there later, but yeah, it's. Uh, well, of course, if you do, if you navigate to LinkedIn, navigate to look up, um, up the fan the video and, and yeah, we'll navigate be there. to your company page. Yeah, um, let's see. And I'm sorry, it's Christina. I feel terrible question. with that question coming up, but. Uh, oh, that's okay. Sorry, it's listen. All good. Here's one by PTZ Optics. Which one was that? Ah, I see. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so PTZ Optics, who uh, they make PTZ cameras and various other professional video equipment, good friends of ours. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great one. They do a lot of their own live content. They mm -hmm. do their own live shows all the time. We just had a great meeting with them this morning mm -hmm. talking about collaboration stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that is a good question. How will LinkedIn live engagement affect the video's distribution, I guess? Um, is there an algorithm behind that, or is that yeah. still sort of in development? Still in development at this time, um, but on our platform holistically, um, what we want is quality content. So anytime you can give your the LinkedIn members or your audience um, really highly engaging quality content to, to help them learn, to help them be that uh, help make them more productive and successful. That's really what we're looking for on our platform. And if members are engaging with it, that will help get it into a larger audience and help it reach more LinkedIn members. Well, and that's what we've learned over and over again with engagement and audio, uh, audience viewership, is that folks just want to know how to do something. So how-to videos, instructional Absolutely. videos, yeah. are definitely at the top. And that's next to entertainment and shock and news and everything else. People just want to learn, yeah. and video is the best way to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Stefan was throwing ideas out there. Um, you know, what about virtual or live streaming virtual conferences with multiple speakers? Are these sorts of, there's a lot of ways to accomplish that. But I guess mm -hmm. that type of content would, would fit well within the platform? Absolutely. We've had tons of uh, advertisers try it out for um, key events or key conferences. The town halls, um, right? Town halls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that content performs phenomenally, um, especially because sometimes people are in remote locations, can't travel to certain right. events and that gives them an inside perspective of the brand and their events. So I would say definitely put that on LinkedIn. Perfect. We do have another question about yeah. uh, how we can better serve content marketers. So for content marketing managers, what would you recommend for building an effective strategy for them on LinkedIn Live or on LinkedIn in general? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a good question because in my past marketing life, the last 10 years of my career, that's what I was it entirely in. Um, I was a content marketing manager and at my last corporation I helped build the content strategy from the ground up. So now when I advise our marketers on LinkedIn, um, I talk about kind of thinking first about your audience. So before you start a content strategy, get to know your audience. And get to know your audience through focus groups, get to know your audience through comments on social media, get to know your audience through your product teams, through uh, surveys, through your sales teams. Do ride-alongs with um, kind of those like uh, front of field people. Right. Um, and, and talk to customers. And then once you know that audience, then you have a good understanding of what their wants are, what their needs are, what, what you can help them with in terms of content. And that can really, really help inform your holistic strategy. Right. And once you have an understanding of that, then you can go ahead and think about, okay, if that's what the audience wants, what kind of key topics can we focus on as a brand to help that audience? 
Right. And then kind of analyzing the white space, right? So thinking about these are the topics we're owning. What are other competitors in our marketplace owning as well? Mm -hmm. And trying to find those white space opportunities for your content. And then thinking about what kind of big rock pieces can we create that will really help us shape our brand and own those topics. And then focusing efforts there. Right. And creating like those big, big rock pieces of so content. And then kind of um, thinking about how we can break those big rock pieces of content into smaller pieces and scale them out to an audience. Cool. Yeah, no, definitely. I like that terminology. I'm totally going to steal like the <laughs> white space and the big yeah. rock and breaking it down. Well, I definitely didn't invent those terms. No, but, no, uh, there. We'll hear them <laughs> next take Tuesday. For that. <laughs> yeah. So we did get some other good uh, questions in here. Uh, Laura Taylor was saying, is there a way to aggregate comments on LinkedIn and YouTube or would moderators have to go to both platforms? So for us right now, our current aggregation tools don't allow us to do that. Um, but again, LinkedIn Live is still in beta, mm -hmm. so I'm sure that will change over time, as, as there are many people who do want to stream on multiple platforms at the same time. Yeah, no, um, that, that's great feedback, and uh, we can definitely take Laura's feedback back into the beta as we're like refining and enhancing mm -hmm. um, cool. the product. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually something that Christina and I were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. and I was just explaining that's why Lisa is going to be hollering over some questions throughout the show. And I had mentioned to our provider, mm -hmm. so we use uh, New Blue Effects for our titles. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, but they're using platforms that have been around for a long time and are well established yeah. and have these open APIs. Right. So they're able to yeah, just exactly. access it's that. A, a and um, as LinkedIn is around for a little bit longer and gets some more, gets more experience, I'm sure that those are going to open up oh, yeah. and we'll be able to use that same tool as well. Exactly. We'll just call them up. You guys yeah. need to tell them to fix it. Uh, <laughs> Tim actually had another great question, more of a technical side. Um, and he, this is coming from some other platforms, I think, is, is why he's asking this. Okay. Are there any limitations around length, uh, number of hours yep. or, or something like that? Is the, some other social media platforms limit to four hours or you don't get a VOD and things like that. Are there any limitations in mind for, for LinkedIn Live? That's a great question. Yeah, so our maximum length currently is four hours, so okay. you're correct on that. Um, but I would think about kind of the member experience and the type of content that you're offering. So if you're live streaming an event or a conference, four hours might make sense. Um, but if you're talking about a short topic, Four hours yeah. might not. People so, are gonna fall asleep. Yeah. Well, so. we've only got three and a half hours left in yeah. our interview. <laughs> today, so. Oh, we're in for a marathon. <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, I don't like to catch it. Even, <laughs> even with conferences breaking it into chunks by smaller segments, mm -hmm. is, is probably makes more sense. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, now does is that four hour limit a cutoff of the stream, or is that similar to some other platforms where? It just doesn't convert to VOD after the fact automatically. Is that is a similar setup? So I'm not on our technical side, right. so I, 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 I actually unfair. don't know that. Um, but um, but we it's still can, in we data, can, so it's easy. We, easy we can ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can ask for you. Well, and these are great takeaway questions as well. So they what are. we'll do is we'll make sure to scan all yeah. these questions from our chat. Of course. And a lot of these ones, I think, would have a lot of value to pass along to the LinkedIn Live beta team. Absolutely. So we'll take a look and we'll also capture a few things. As, now that we're talking, I definitely have a few more questions. Oh, I gleaned off lots. some of the, yeah. uh, just from Wirecast, some of the settings. I think we're limited to 720 through LinkedIn, but maybe that was just Wirecast. So that would be another question for the beta team as well. Yeah. And um, as we know, these things change all the time. So certain platforms start at one level and then they move up as they Absolutely. increase their bandwidth. Yeah. And We're and evolving and changing and as we go. So totally. we're learning from advertisers like yourselves and learning from our members. So uh, we're excited on where it's heading next. Right on. So yeah, we're not going to ask any more encoding settings. <laughs> no, but this is the best bit rate that we should be screaming. Yeah. Here's, this, here's a super important one again from from Tim, and, and maybe this you know he's in Florida, so maybe this was after last night's exciting television with the first uh, debates in the Democratic oh. nomination oh. race. He <laughs> asked ten about, out of ten out of twenty. He, he just said political. Uh, I guess meaning is that type of content something you envision maybe being interesting or valuable on LinkedIn, or is that maybe mm. something that would be better on another platform? Yeah, so um, I'd, I'd refer to our like ad policy guidelines. Um, anytime you're posting um, live video or native video or any types of content, um, we always want to make sure that the environment is uh, one that's trusted. And uh, so 
refer to the ad guidelines um, on the different elements. So and that's the rule set. If yeah. it fits within those guidelines, exactly. you'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, and there's also been some new legislation that's come into place for uh, how many gates you have to get through before you can set up those kinds of political ads on other platforms. Right. And honestly, I've never really thought of LinkedIn as being a place for political discussion. It's very bipartisan and just like not, really not the place for it. But yeah, I can yeah. see certain platforms, certain folks that have, have certain followers would probably benefit from it, maybe. So two big ones here from Stefan as well. Um, are the live streams recorded and available later, meaning do they convert to VOD automatically? Mm -hmm. I believe that is that is, that is the case. And um, then it'll live on your company page. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and his other one is, is there a way to target the audience, maybe by invitation only or even a paywall? That's a big one too. <laughs> um, so right now you can do like sponsor content to promote the live video. Um, and so that's definitely an option. You can um, promote it to a variety of different audiences on LinkedIn. We have uh, really robust targeting on LinkedIn within our marketing solutions. So you can target specific companies, specific job functions, titles, oh, cool. um, specific um, education sets, and uh, really kind of get the message to the audience that you would find most valuable for your brand. I think where his question is coming from, and, and it's a question that I, that I kind of had as well, mm -hmm. is that, and, and you've kind of alluded to a little bit of this, that the, the idea is to provide a more trusted professional environment than we might see on some of the other social media mm -hmm. networks. Um, so I would imagine that running webinars and things like that on LinkedIn would be, uh, it's a more pro professional environment. And so the question of being able to invite or maybe even putting a paywall in front of it, I would yeah. imagine for some professionals would, would have value. And again, it's in beta, so we're not going to expect yeah. it right there day one. But yeah, I think that's probably where Stefan's coming from, a similar approach of being able to hopefully generate some sort of revenue back out of maybe doing educational content, for yeah. example. I think we're all about also like offering organic type sure. content yeah. as well. Like we're wanting our members to come back to LinkedIn and engage in content. Um, so I, I don't foresee like paywalls right. as an option, but there definitely um, is like an option to invite members via like a sponsored in-mail um, okay. message or a sponsored content message right. to tune into the, to the live broadcasts. Great. Well, and what we've uh, seen so far with our experience on LinkedIn is kind of borrowing a few things from Facebook in a way where the Facebook pages don't allow any of those kinds of private streams. Yeah, exactly. So it's just not allowed, and I think it's kind of the right platform for that because yeah. it is very open and organic. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then Laura came back with another question here. What types of metrics are will be available to advertisers will be, and where will they be able to access them? Yeah. So right now you can see like the number of views of your stream. Um, you can also see the watch time of your LinkedIn Live. Um, and then you can see the typical demographic reporting that you'd be able to see with any of your LinkedIn um, ads or organic postings. So you can see what I talked about previously, the types of companies that are watching, the job functions that are watching, seniorities, job titles, all of those things that make um, unique uh, LinkedIn really unique. So leveraging the existing LinkedIn metrics that, yeah. that everyone already likes about the platform. Absolutely. Just adding the video part to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Well, those actually have a lot more value, too, as opposed to other platforms where yeah. it's not as clear or there's a lot of... Yeah. Uh, I mean, YouTube can give you a lot of analytics, but a lot of it is useless. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, so As we know from uh, yeah, a couple from, of weeks ago. Exactly. <laughs> not all of it's helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if anyone has any more questions in chat, uh, throw them in there. Um, Stefan says, uh, George and I, great minds think alike. Eh, fools seldom differ too, Stefan. So, you know, I'll have to go with one of those. Um, <laughs> but uh, if there's any uh, other questions for Christina about LinkedIn Live and, and what's coming next, throw them in there. Um, and I'll keep an eye on it. And do you, have, do you have anything else that you'd like to talk about or share with us about LinkedIn Live? Uh, not no, it's not, okay. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm just really excited about uh, having the opportunity to come meet with you guys and cool. talk about LinkedIn mm -hmm. Live on LinkedIn Live. Very meta. Yeah. Um, very totally. excited to to be partnering with you guys today. And of course, we are going to be providing our feedback uh, to the teams at LinkedIn uh, as part of this beta program that we're involved in. And uh, you know, definitely any of this this stuff that's coming in from our viewers, we'll definitely be sharing that as well. Sounds uh, to great. Make sure that. The good feedback is there, um, for sure. I wasn't actually anticipating the chat being such a uh, good source of feedback, 
but we will definitely look through it and pass Ab that along absolutely. as well. This was uh, fantastic. I mm -hmm. see like tons and tons of comments and questions. Yeah, there's some really good um, ones in here. So we can yeah. definitely <laughs> take that back to the yeah. team leading the beta. Cool. Stefan asks a really, really important one though as a final one. Okay. Do you need a dog in your live stream to attract a big crowd? I'd say it can't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. A dog yeah. I'm a dog person, so I say it can't hurt. <laughs> we have a famous dog on the show one time. <laughs> one, one time you interviewed oh, a you dog. Oh, guys, you guys interviewed a dog? Yeah, the one dog. time you oh, okay. the dog. We actually had an well, opportunity to meet Crusoe the Dachshund. Yeah. yeah we'll I'm sure you're a you big know. fan. Yeah. Uh, uh, big fan. That was my reaction. What? So where do I stack rank? Is the dog above me or... Oh, uh, I'm I think not going to answer that. Oh, no. Cameron got your name right, so I'd say way above. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> I didn't say Kristen once. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, oh, yeah, he, he's a content uh, producer. He's actually out of uh, out of Quebec, and, um, and we had a lot of fun interviewing uh, uh, Chris a while ago. I was going to call him by the other name. What's the other dog's name? Know. No, I can't remember. Forgot. Oakley. But Oakley. Oh, yes. Lisa Thank knows, you. of course. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, a Dachshund dynasty. Yeah. Oakley and... Uh, I, I'm going to have to brush up on this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not well, familiar. That was uh, <laughs> quite a few episodes ago, but yeah. <laughs> it was. It was a lot of fun. It's in the archives, of course. So I think that'll probably wrap us up for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having thank me. Yeah. And of course, we're here every Thursday at 3 o'clock Eastern talking about live streaming topics. Mm -hmm. Next week, I'm not sure what it is, but hopefully it will be another spicy topic. It's going to be topic. spicy. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we'll see. If we get our stuff together. It's also Canada Day uh, on Monday, so, yep. you know, Canadians will get a long weekend to enjoy. Oh, and so actually, on Thursday, it's the 4th. July 4th, that's true. So, so our American viewers probably will be a little bit intoxicated. I don't um, know. We could maybe. make streaming great again. <laughs> we could... Uh... Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> We're pulling out all the stops for our viewers behind the camera. So, Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next week at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Thanks so much.